A lot of people want to know how to find a real estate investor or mentor. It seems simple, but it's a little more complicated. And the reason why I know it's more complicated than you might think is because I talk to a lot of students who have hired coaches that they are very disappointed in. And so I started to wonder how does that happen and started to come up with some reasons or some ways to prevent that from happening. So we're going to discuss that in this next video. My name is Mitch Steven and I've helped people all over the nation become successful and vibrant and balanced real estate investors. And when I look back at my career, I saw some times when I made mistakes and I saw a lot of people that made mistakes when they hired coaches. What is a good coach? What should we expect from a coach? What's the goal? How do we know if we're getting the right person for us? When and how do we see the return on investment? How do we recognize it? What is it that we measure when we have a coach? I'm going to use my two decades worth of experience and I'm going to tell you what I think works when picking a coach. I think the number one thing when you go to pick a coach or a mentor is to know the strategy that you want to delve into. This industry is a huge industry. There are so many ways to make money. It's up to you to narrow it down. What is the one strategy that you want to know more about? You're going to forsake all the other ones now. You're not going to start listening to, you're going to stop listening to everything else and you're going to just start to drill down on this one topic. Down, down, deeper, deeper, and deeper. Keeping everything else out. Once you know what that strategy is, that's the only time you can start looking for a coach because everything else depends on that. You have to know what you're trying to learn. Number two. Once you know the strategy that you want to delve into or even the issue that you want to overcome, then it's time to pick a coach. We got to pick someone who's doing right now live, unfiltered, not fabricated, actually doing the kind of strategy that you want to do. If you want to be a house flipper, a fix and flipper guy, make sure the coach that you hire is doing fix and flips right now. You want to be a wholesaler, make sure they're wholesaling right now. You want to be an owner financier, Make sure the guy's owner financing houses right now and doing a lot of it. Number three, check the person out. Check out online. Check everything you can. Look up scam on the Google and his name and just see what people are saying about this person that you're considering. There's, it amazes me the bad reputations that a lot of people have that still get big time coaching clients and big time coaching fees when it was right there for everyone to see that it probably wasn't going to work out. Now I do want to caution you about one thing and I've noticed this and I won't name any names, but I have friends that are some of the top gurus across the nation. And if they've done a massive amount of volume, then you can expect to hear some bad things because you're never going to make everyone happy, but you'll be able to tell the difference. There's, you know, a thousand, good accolades and three stars and four stars and five stars and there's six or seven or eight one stars those are just people that maybe no one could have satisfied you know maybe that person picked the wrong coach for what they wanted to learn it's not always the guru's fault but anyways do your research and you'll be able to tell number four do the best you can to figure out if this coach is someone you would like to be on and off the field if he's a great coach and he does great stuff to teach, but in his personal life it's a disaster or they don't have integrity or there's some other rotten thing over there, it's not a good fit because sooner or later the personal person collides with the business uh, teachings. And so make sure the person that you want to teach you is the kind of person you want to be on and off the field. Make sure they've achieved what you want to achieve. Make sure they see the world things the way that you do. Otherwise, it could be a point of conflict. Those are the things to look for in a coach and how to size a coach up. But now what should you expect from a coach? I like when I'm hiring a coach is to just make sure that I learn enough to get the money that I paid for this coach back. And we can always measure a coach by how much money a coach makes us or how much money a mentor makes us because we can measure that number. We know how much they cost and we know how much the transaction that they got us through made us made us. And so that's one way of measuring. One way you'll never be able to measure a coach or a mentor is by how much time they kept you from losing or by how much 
uh, money they kept you from losing because you'll have no number to plug in. You can't measure the negative. I can't tell you how many times I've coached people that said, I really don't know, you know, that I've really made a lot of money from this. And I said, well, let me just correct you here for a second. The first three deals you were going to do that I stopped you from doing, you were going to lose $30,000 on at minimum. So then they turn around, they agree, they go, you know, that's right. Sometimes I have to point out, we wouldn't even be to the position of finding this private lender at this moment if we hadn't have gone through all these other things that we did. Sometimes coaching is very tenuous. It's very simple to explain them. You could go to any stop sign right now and take a right and one thing's going to happen in your life or you could go to the same exact stop sign right now and take a left and something else is going to happen in your life. And you don't know. You don't know what it is, but... Everything you choose to do causes something to happen. And when you choose a coach, something's going to happen. And make sure you get the right one like we discussed before. And so hopefully these things that happen will be positive, invigorating, and get you to go to the next level. Also, you need to make a conscious decision before you say yes to anyone. And you have to kind of think about it. A lot of times we go to a seminar and we see this person who's very engaging, very popular, very famous, and you just get all turned on with him. But when you sign up for their coaching, you never talk to that guy again. And now you're talking to some underling who maybe has only done 20 transactions in their entire life. They're just kind of reading from a script from you about the steps that they want you to go through, but they never really lived it. That's quite different from hiring some coaches. Like me, for example, if you hire me, you get me. When you get me, you got 24 years worth of experience. When you're telling me about how your buyer's talking to you about how, or how your seller's talking to you, I got 24 years worth of experience and I can start to say, I think I know where this conversation's headed. A lot of times I've told students, because of my experience, been able to say, you know, this is what I want you to do, John. I want you to go buy a shovel right now. I want you to go to the backyard. I want you to go to the back left-hand corner, and I want you to dig a hole four foot deep and four foot wide, and I want you to call me back. John goes and buys a shovel, digs the hole, calls me back, and says, how in the hell did you know that was there? And I say, John, I've been doing this for 24 years. I could smell in this conversation where this man's headed. I have dealt with people like this before, and I knew exactly where this conversation was headed. That doesn't happen because I did 20 deals. It happens because I did 2,000 deals that worked and 3,000 deals that never got consummated. That's how that worked. So be sure you know if you're going to be dealing with the person that you're so impressed with or you're going to be dealing with the underling. And if you're going to be dealing with the underling, make sure that's all right with you. Because sometimes to talk to the, directly to the people that you're so impressed with is a whole different price range. It could be the difference in $10,000 to be mentored and $50,000 to be mentored. Either one of them can be great or good for the money. I always measure, do you get your money back? Do you, did you learn enough to get your money back? If the answer is yes, then it really doesn't matter which one you pick, you got your money's worth and it's time to think about the next one. To get the first 100 pages of my book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom, just click on the link below. I'll get you the first 100 pages for free. And there you'll get to see if you like my style and you like the story. But this is a story about how a dummy, me, figured out how to buy a hundred houses a year and everything that came with it. Actually, I wrote the book because I went to those seminars and I was told one thing and then I went to practice those things I learned in the seminar and found out things go just a little bit different. And so this book is about what happens after the Get Rich Seminar and how things really work. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more content. I'll be right there with you.